Yes, still with football on the Sportsman Zone, a notable exclusion from the Reggae Boys squad for the Gold Cup is Ravel Morrison, a player that has 18 appearances and scored two goals for the Reggae Boys since 2020. Unsurprisingly, the issue was raised at a press conference on Monday and head coach Emeril Grimson was at the ready to respond. We have had Ravel in all our squads, in all our matches uh, up till now. and. Um, so he was without a club when we played, uh, or he was not playing for DZ when, when we played Mexico. But we could see him in the two games prior against Trinidad, so we could uh, help him get some playing, playing time on the pitch against Trinidad. So we, this is why we could select him for the, for the Mexico camp. But we talked together then and told him that it was, would be difficult to pick him for the Gold Cup squad if he wasn't playing regular football. So I had a good talk with him two weeks ago uh, or three weeks ago and explained just from professional reasons he, he, he deserved to know that he was not going to be selected and he was appreciative that we did that uh, and uh, hopefully, and I know he will find a good club and he will hopefully start to play well and we can pick him for a for the next uh, camp we will do. Yeah, given the explanation for Morrison's exclusion, journalists sought to draw a parallel with the selection of Dijon Whisper Richards, who hasn't been playing at the club level. Here's Al Grimson's explanation. I think, I think we all agree that he has qualities in his armory that is way, way, way beyond a 17-year-old. Uh, and I think he could be and I'm saying you, you never know with a 17, 18, 19 year old where their, where their career will go. But at this stage, we believe that this kid can go all the way and be um, yeah, one of the, the, the best players for Jamaica in the, in the future. But we will have to see where, where the future will take him, what decisions he will take, how he, he will use his opportunities he is getting now. So we think it is good. And we've said before as well that when you have uh, a squad for a tournament, there is always going to be a few players that will not have a lot of playing time. And we would rather have those players young so they will gain experience. Uh, and he's one of these guys. I think he showed today that he can be a really good impact player. He is, he's unpredictable. He can go with the left, go with the right, good in a dribble. He's fast. So he can be a really good impact player for us. Uh, but for us, it's mainly to, to, to see him, work with him for future sake, because hopefully he will be one of Jamaica's greatest uh, in the future. But like I said, it's a young player. We, we, we never know. But the reason we pick him is, is his qualities. Yeah, Coach Emeril Grimson speaking there on Dijon Whisper Richards. Um, we still have Andrew Price online with us. Andrew, to be perfectly honest, I am surprised that this discussion came up as much as it did in Monday's press conference. By the way, this press conference followed the 2-1 defeat to Jordan, and it was at this press conference that the 23-man Gold Cup squad was revealed as well. But I found it quite surprising that this Dijon Whisper Richards question came up a couple of times during the press conference, and I got the feeling as well that the coach was slightly surprised. I think there was one particular time when he said, that I expected the Ravel Morrison question, but I'm not too sure he was as prepared for the Dijon Whisper Richards um, question just because of uh, the, 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 the type of uh, celebratory attitude that has been around this young man and the qualities um, that he possesses. But your opinion on this, the Ravel Morrison exclusion and the parallel that journalists sought to draw with the Dijon Whisper Richards selection? Well, the, the natural parallel is just like any journalist would do. If you are not playing consistently at a high level, then you are not selected. So I suppose a lot of the journalists were questioning Dijon not playing at a high level, why was he selected? But the coach clearly answered in the affirmative as to his selection. 
that he believes that he has a lot of potential. And I think we all do. We all believe that he has a lot of potential and he's going to be one for the future. And just as how Ronaldo, R9, went to the World Cup in 1994 with the Brazilian team and didn't kick a ball for the entire World Cup, but he was given the opportunity to experience a World Cup which suited him very well several years later. And I suppose He's drawing that parallel where you have a potentially great player who you believe is going to excel in the future to give him the exposure so that he can be around professional players and also train consistently with these professional players so that he can continue to improve. And I believe that is the reason why he was included in the squad. Yeah, as for the Ravel Morse exclusion, did that surprise you? It didn't surprise me. I mean, Ravel has to understand that, and he has been in football, he's 30 years old, he's, he has been in football long enough now as a professional. If you are not active with a club, national coaches are not going to select you. And, you know, Ravel has to sort out himself, get himself playing again, so that he can be playing consistently high-level professional football if he wants to be included in the Reggae Boys squad that's is trying to get to the next World Cup. Yeah, especially because he is 30 years old, right? You're not talking about a 21, 22 year old here. That's correct. Yeah, I also saw Michael Hector um, asking if he played cricket um, because he wasn't given a call up to this squad. Uh, <laughs> what do you make of this Michael Hector situation? You know, the thing about it, every player, every coach, every agent, is going to want their players to be in the squad. Michael Hex has not been on the radar for Jamaica for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And for him to be asking a question whether he's played cricket or not is unfortunate. And I understand how he must feel, but it is quite obvious that the country and the coaching staff are going in a different direction. I mean, when you look at the defensive individuals that we have in the squad. Um, Mari Bell, Adishan, Bernard, Ethan Pinnock, um, the, the Damian Lowe. Latibadir is there as well. You know, Latibadir, you know, you know, we have players that are playing consistently and doing well week in, week out. Amari um, Bell just qualified for the the EPL yeah. with, with Luton, you know. Um, you, you look at Bernard, he plays for Swansea in the championship. Um, Ethan Pinnock consistently week in, week out is doing well for Brentford in the English Premier League. Um, Mariapa is there, I know, for experience. He has been to several Gold Cups. Um, Kemal Lawrence, uh, as, a, as, a, as a good fullback, is there for his experience. And, you know, you have youngsters like Brown and Lembas who are there also. So it's going to be very difficult for somebody like Hector to walk into the squad after being away for such a long period of time. Yeah. No, I empathize with him though. Yeah, th that's a fact. I want to get a comment from you on the Adrian Mariapa selection. I see a number of fans saying that, listen, um, Adrian Mariapa, he's too old, he's too slow, um, and especially if the coach is going to try to play that um, high-pressed game that they tried against Jordan yesterday and the back line will be left exposed and Mariapa is just not it at this stage. Your thoughts? I think Mariapa is brought into the squad for his experience and his leadership qualities. I don't think that Adrian will actually be a part of the team that will actually qualify for the next World Cup that will be held in North America and Central America, but I believe that he is part of the transition and the coach doesn't want to just throw him out. He wants him to be there to provide guidance and leadership for a lot of the players and that's one of the reasons he's there. He's very dependable, he's very versatile, he can play anywhere across the entire um, back line, whether at fullback or central defense, and he wants some depth and ex experience going into this World Cup. Yeah. And that's the reason why he continues to persist with him. 
And what do you make of the midfield? I hear comments about the midfield being too similar um, in terms of the players that we have there, not enough uh, creative quality um, in the midfield. And the fact is we have struggled for goals. Um, what do you make of that? The midfield is a bit light to me. You know, I, I would have loved to have seen more creative players into the midfield. I mean, Kevin Lambert and Daniel Johnson are experienced players, you know, Bobby Reed. Um, but there, I, I was impressed with the game that he played against Qatar. I, you know, I like his movement, I like his industry. But I, I, it depends on the formation of the coach wishes to you. He plays a 4 3 3, a 4 2 3 one, you know, it depends on the formation that he plays. I believe that a lot of the players can be um, employed um, on, on the flanks, you know, people like Burke, people like even Nicholson, um, Richard Gray, they can be employed on, on the flank. So he, he has a lot of rotations, but defensively, I was actually um, surprised that um, Devon um, Speedy Williams wasn't included. I think that he brings a lot of stability to the midfield, but um, obviously Lambert and Daniel Johnson um, will, will play that role. And Russell, who um, we saw recently, and he did very well in the Nations League game, when he played against Mexico, when he came on and had his cameo role there, he seems to be a, a very sturdy um, central midfield and plays the, the number six position very well. So the coach has selected his charges. Uh, let us support them and see how best we do at the World Cup. Yeah, I must tell you that I have a lot of time for Daniel Johnson, but I thought he was unimpressive in that game against Jordan especially in the second half where he just as far as I'm concerned just kept giving the ball away and he'll need to improve improve significantly on that performance going in the gold cup but I have no doubt that he has the quality to be able to do that I, I guess the million dollar question now coach is how far do you see this team going at the gold cup of course we've been to a couple of gold cup finals in recent times um and a lot of discussions about how far this team can go how do you see it i think anything less than the semi-finals would, would be disappointing i believe that a lot of the teams are not as strong as they would have been because a lot of the squads are not allowing players to play two tournaments like the Nations League and the Gold Cup. So the United States and Canada, they are feeling weaker teams. Possibly even Mexico, they are feeling a weaker team. So I am suggesting that you know this is our very ripe time for us to see if we can go all the way. And if we don't make the semifinals, I think it would be a disappointing World Cup. All right, Andrew Price, thanks very much for joining us on the Sportsmax Zone. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll see how things will go starting on Saturday against the United States of America. Thanks much for joining us. Thanks for having me, gentlemen. Yeah, once again, Jamaica in that Group A with the United States of America, Trinidad and Tobago also in that group, and the fourth team will be St. Kitts and Nevis um, or French Guiana who are playing off um, today. Tuesday, Lance Whitaker, yeah. to see if they well, get there, in. There's actually a storm at the moment in Florida, and it has interrupted the game between Guyana and Guadeloupe, who are playing the first game of that triple header of the three matches that will decide the three teams that are going to fill the next three spots for the main draw for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Nil all between Guadeloupe and Guyana, and uh, the game has been interrupted because of a storm. As you said, Martinique play Puerto Rico after, and St. Kitts and Nevis battle French Guyana in the third and final game of the night. Uh, their last opportunities, these teams, to get into the Gold Cup proper. All right, we'll be updating you on all of that come tomorrow's show. More to come on the Sportsmag Zone today. Next up, we're talking cricket, the Ashes. And guess what? England. Mmm. Mmm. They paid. <laughs> I'll tell you about it after this. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>